This is In Boot Camp, Episode 14, Handlebars, on Saturday, April 20th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB14. Hey, Ryan, how's it going today? It's good. How about you? Good. The weather is finally back to being spring-like. Oh, you think it's going to last? Hopefully now. For the second time now, nice and warm out. Nice and warm, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's probably like 75 today. Yes, it was. Pretty warm. Pretty nice. Very few people uh, made it into class today. This is Easter weekend, so there was uh, quite a few people in the park doing Easter egg things. Oh, that's always nice. Little parties together, so that was fun. A lot of kids running around. Yep, for sure. So, how has class been this week? Um, very, very fun and very, very confusing. We're trying... I I get hung up on simple stuff, as you know. And there wasn't much direction this week. It was so Tuesdays and Thursdays, we just... We had two projects the whole day. Like, it was just, like, we're building a little Star Wars thing. We did some stuff together. Like, like every 15, 20 minutes, we'd check in, and he'd say, if you haven't gotten to this point, this is what you're supposed to do. And then we were always a little ahead for that. It was just working your tables and trying to get these two projects done. So so tell me about what projects we're actually using. So, like, SQL, because you've been learning SQL, and well, you one also of them did, one recently of them did. starting le- learning Express. Yeah. The first one we did was just showing us how to use routes and Express. So we were like listening on ports and doing all these other things and stuff. Express wasn't that shocking at first, and then you can actually do some cool stuff later on. The first one we were doing was just, you know, you had the data was just a variable that was stored locally. There was no persistence and stuff, and you could add to it. And it was just a, like a array of objects of Star Wars characters and their made up stats and everything else. And it was just, um, we have this postman. I don't know what exactly you would call it, but it lets you view Git requ- or post and everything else and Git requests, and you can see the little JSON and everything else. And we're just practicing using that right now because we're generating little APIs. Like, you could like hit J- API table something, and it was just give you all the JSON stuff for mm-hmm. it. For all those characters. Yeah. And so that, that took us the whole time and took us a full three hours. Mm-hmm. And then Thursday, we had a SQL one where it was reserving tables. Um, for like a restaurant like there's only five tables you had to get uh uh, so the end user would input their name their phone number their email and then they had to enter in a a unique string that was going to be their identifier in case multiple people were there Mm -hmm. i thought that was ridiculous to have somebody figure out on their own yeah yeah because it's usually the application's job exactly and then so i was like well i know a better way to do that turns out i didn't what was Um, your proposal well like because i've one of my Udemy things I know about the node module uh, UUID. Mm-hmm. Well, so we were handling us all with um, like our our SQLness was being done with jQuery and AJAX. So how do you on so I mean the HTML like the, the at create user dot HTML that just had a script tag in there. Like I don't know how to get a node module to work in there. You don't. Yeah. yeah. So my beautiful oh that's just UUID was like. I'm like, I'm going to contribute to this group project. Nope. I, I wasted like 20 minutes. So what you would do is you would have your API layer have that capability instead. Yeah. Because in order to get to the database itself, you have to go through Node anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you would have your UID generation done on the Node side and then have that go into the database. Yeah. Sounds like a much better thing. No, we did. Actually, we our final project didn't actually work. We were in teams of four mm-hmm. and we we're dividing up the work. And then constantly moving around and constantly breaking each other's stuff. And in the end of the night, didn't work. But um, parts of the project worked. And if we had more time, we would have got it going yeah. and stuff. But Did you finish it later? They gave us a solution. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, oh, that's how you do this part that's broken. I see. And uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, we didn't even go over it as a class afterwards. So it was just like, okay, time to go home. Yeah. And then they give you... Uh, kind of nice because it gives you time to reflect on your own and stuff yeah. and get away from your group members you just worked with yeah exactly and that's why you should try finishing it on your own that, that that feels like a reasonable thing to do but now that we're getting into the second half of the program there's no, no more powerpoint we used to do little slideshows and talk about stuff yeah. now it's just coding exercise coding exercise coding exercise it's probably not quite as linear not not as documentation driven as some of the earlier content had been yeah it's not easy to show client side api layer database layer all in you know in slideshow format because there's just too, it's too broad. So today we're introduced to handlebars, and we had 
I mean, the uh, professor walked up there and never once gave us a slideshow, never did anything. Just We just started going. So introduce me to Handlebars. Handlebars is a wonderful way of templating out your website. So you know how Express can serve, like you can, well, we were just giving whole HTML documents. Oh, and we could also... Um, you could serve APIs, of course. Yeah. Or we you could on the fly just return an HTML tags and other things yes. and not actually have that. Or you can send an entire file. Yep. Now we're using, if you use handlebars you just make like a little views directory in there then you have like a main one and that would have like just all your style sheets and all your other like just a boilerplate html document so it's like, like an overall template yep um, anything that's going to be used on multiple pages should go in there and then then it gets crazy because you start doing double bracket or double curly brackets or triple curly brackets what's the difference so when you give Let's say you wanted something to, if you wanted your HTML to get rendered by the browser, you would use three curly brackets. Okay. If you didn't, you'd use two. And so what's a situation where you would? Uh, let's say you actually wanted to, like, so let's say you're making a, a coding blog and you actually wanted to put, you know, uh, like an H1 tag, something or other, and you don't want it to get rendered. Then you okay. do it with double. Yep. I've never, so a lot of this stuff I've kind of looked coming up because I've seen like, hey, this, we're going to do React, we're going to do this yeah. and stuff. And I've kind of half looked into it because I was, I was curious, like, what are we going to do and yeah. stuff? I never really looked at handlebars because I looked at Express stuff. I'm like, eh, it's rounding stuff, eh, ignore. And then we'll wait for class to get there and stuff because it didn't sound like something super cool to do. So this was a complete shock to me. And it actually is kind of cool making these pages like this. So when the end user submits or makes a request for the page and stuff the page gets generated on the fly and then sent over yep so what's a what's a use case of having server-side page generation i know some people say that you're not supposed to show your routes and everything else like so you, let's say it was like the nexus.tv and instead of being like slash show slash that it would always just be the home page and you can always just kind of hide the url path that way mm -hmm. and you could oh you could also serve you can also do it vice versa where you could actually just have a shows page and stuff like that but this gives you more option. We actually just spent about half the class period on this. The other half was just recap and going over another exercise because include myself included, I kind of struggled this week with some of the projects. Yeah, uh, it's getting pretty broad now. Yes, and a lot I of mean, we're parts. doing front end and back end now. It's and, not like we're just database. doing that. And database stuff. Yeah. And I had my SQL workbench crash on me now without crashing. Like, like it Partial was crash. infinite hang. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like I don't know what it's I work did. Bench. I mean, it, you didn't do anything. It, you looked at it and it stopped working. So even I tried to open up previous code examples and they weren't working. I was connected. MAMP was up. I was serving there and it, it wouldn't. It said it was there. I, I don't know what I Workbench did. Workbench is just not good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. I know, but it is getting fun now that we have all these pieces. Well, I mean, when you look at our um, file directories now, it's it's like we got our package JSON, we got our views, we got our everything, and then we have stuff that is not global, and it's starting to feel like a real developer, because when I see what you're working on, you're like, oh, look at all these directories I have. Yeah. I'm super cool. I got a lot of directories. You have I've got a lot multiple of repos, multiple directories. I've even had nested node modules. Those are, those are bad. One of the um, in-class activities, we had to end by publishing our work on Heroku, and okay. I've not done that yet. For the so, audience, what, do you, does everybody know what Heroku is? To be honest, I don't know. It's kind of like GitHub Pages is what I figure because it lets you host stuff, but I don't. I just made an account, logged in. So you know how I use Windows? I've heard that. I use the Git Bash for everything. Yes. The Heroku CLI login thing requires you to use the CM, like the command prompt. Like, oh, the real one. Yeah. So in so you open it up, like run CMD, blah, blah, and then you do Heroku login stuff. And then you just let that run in the background. And then that lets you push master to Heroku. Cool. Yeah. I guess. Weird. Is I mean, Windows people had to do that. The Mac people didn't. Yeah. So uh, uh, Windows work around. Typical. Hours and hours of agony. Yes. Yeah. So you should uh, probably look into what Heroku actually does and what it is. Well, I know there's a free tier where you can put your node app yep. online so you and, can or python or, or yeah. any other number of things well so you know how we were doing express to do different routes and stuff yep. um heroku let us do all of that um so it assigns a random port for you and stuff because when i first pushed it up i was just like well i'm gonna use port uh 8080 something yeah. something well didn't like that mm -hmm. uh so you have to do the port equals process environment yeah. whatever something or 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 you like that <laughs> 
Very well done decorations with an ore in it. Just it's kind of weird in my mind. Totally okay. Well, now that I've seen, I mean, now it becomes I never place. See, it was a weird. When you've seen a bunch of code, seen a bunch of stuff, and then all of a sudden, an or statement into something that's supposed to be an absolute. I mean, it makes sense now that you understand. Now that I understand it, but it kind of threw me. Off. I had to do a double take. You should. It's very good. So I got Heroku working, and it's cool. So you deployed like a little uh, Node app up there. Yeah, you know, that, that just, little Star Wars character yeah, thing. So just an API. That's good. Yep, just a little API. Yeah, Heroku is good for that. The free tier is kind of suspicious because. You get something, you basically get 18 hours a day, and and that's great because you sleep for a few hours a day, probably, and you don't really need it during the middle of the night. And they had a, they asked what I was going to use it for, and I'm like, I'm student, student something or other, yeah. and it, it didn't care. Yeah, they don't care. Got a weird homework coming up, Yeah. Um, and this homework needs to be deployed to Heroku, and they say most of the projects and everything will have to be on heroku so get used to using it that makes sense because if you have a database and you have an api and you have a front end you have to host GitHub it pages doesn't work yeah exactly this next homework is a survey of 10 questions uh you give it a name you give it a link a photo if you want of yourself allegedly and it's supposed to be a friend finder and so you give us one through five how do you agree with these statements and then it finds the how many so let's say there's 10 people in the thing and there's 10 questions. It finds the difference. Like you have an array, you make an array of all the questions and what you scored. And then you compare that to the arrays of everyone else's things. And then you make a temporary array of the difference between them. And whoever one is the smaller between all of them, you're most likely to be friends with. That sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any similarities to anything I never had to do in a practice test for a company that didn't hire me. Yeah, but that sounds incredibly familiar. <laughs> what are the chances, right? Yeah, but before Thursday, I have to get this done. And, and so this do, is my you, long week. do you have to make an API for that? Or is it yes. Is it uh, just an API in a database, no front end? Like, what is the Nope, deal? there's a front end, which I'm probably just going to flat out steal because they gave us a working example to look at. Okay. And then there is a API-ness involved. There will be a link in the show notes to what I'm showing Ryan right now. But it just, it literally just shows you the JSON of all the stuff. Yes, I, I see the JSON of all the stuff. There's a name and a photo and a bunch of scores. I when don't, you serve the route API something. I don't necessarily like how all the scores are being presented there in just a flat array. It's kind of... Yeah, but because then it forces you like you don't get ever get to add add or change any questions ever. So, like, well, that's the just... assignment scope was just ten questions. Well, I know, but it doesn't teach you good methodologies for future enhancement. Like that's like that's writing, next week's way. Writing software is super easy for today, but we don't write software for today. We write software for the next person who comes after us, and we write future for tomorrow. Well, isn't that a uh, bad convention? No. No, that's good convention. But you don't get paid more that way. So if you if you keep on thinking about the next person and stuff, then the projects are going to be shorter time frame. I don't want to be paid more in the sense of I made bad stuff now. I want to be paid more in the sense that there's a new problem to solve. Oh. And if I make the new problem, that doesn't help overall. I should always that's not good job security. You should be always be get paid to clean up your own mess. Job security is because I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and you work in the industry, and I do not yet. So it's yet that that see. Well, yeah, that's the deal. That's the deal. So tell me more about this Linux line here. Oh, so I thought you couldn't use Linux in class. I was told at the beginning. So I bought a new machine for this class. Yes, you did. I bought a new fancy pants Samsung Evo nine seventy whatever Super M dot two drive NVMe, beautiful read write, and much better than this weird. I don't even remember the manufacturer of this, but it's not even an NVMe. It's some really old M.2 drive. And it was, yeah, it was slow. It was every. I mean, compared to a spinning drive, lightning fast, but still, I didn't like it. I upgraded it through Ubuntu on there. Um, got um, Visual Studio Code. All the everything that was required for the class I had on there. But and then it's like, oh, and then we had another email go out saying specifically you must use a Windows Seven machine with at least two cores and at least four gigs of memory and i'm like huh. there's a line right underneath the physical hardware thing that says you may not use linux i'm like that stinks 
and then the professor made something about, okay, everyone, please use the same tools so we can help each other out. And then I showed him that I was running something in the Linux subsystem, and like, like, oh, Matt, Matt, you should use Linux more often. And I'm like, you know what? You just, you just opened up a gateway for me. So I got a new terabyte uh, drive from Crucial. I'm not, not, not trying to Crucial M.2 drive, but I like Crucial memory and uh, everything else. The server, th- server 3 in the other room here has a Crucial M.2 drive. But after tax and stuff, it was like $138 yeah. for a terabyte. Isn't that incredible? And yeah, yeah. For, for an M.2. So a few weeks ago, I was looking at drives. And so for 150 bucks, I could have purchased the same, probably the same one you got, but you just got yours on sale. It's been about a month. But instead of spending that, I got two drives, one regular SATA drive and one M.2 drive for the same price, 512 each. And Disco Dingo just came out. Yes, it did, officially. Uh, what number is that? 1904? 1904. And the fun thing is, the first time I used Ubuntu was 904, Hardy Herring. Well, there you go. So 10... 10, ten whole years yeah. of the Ubuntu fan club. And it still works somehow. Yes. So it's gone There were some changes. bad years. Um, Most of the 10 in between were pretty bad. Yeah, but they're, I, I'm happy with them now. They're, they're slightly better now. So using Linux in your class, you know, there's... That what your professor said, helping each other with some of the tooling, you know, that's kind of a big deal because now you won't necessarily be using MAMP. You'll be using just either a Docker image or just MySQL installed directly. So how do you how do you feel about that? With how many people have dropped out that were we were having some major problems. Like we had trouble telling people to press F twelve and then hit the console tab to seek the console logs. Yeah. Those people have left. Or or gotten better. There have been some miraculous turnarounds because yeah. I kind of had some background going into it and stuff. And so I haven't learned that much. Some of these people have just poured their heart and soul into learning a ton. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of cool to see how everyone's changed so much. And to think that this is just a six month program. Right. Which is great. Now, do you think you will, like you haven't set up your new computer yet with your new. 12 hours from now, I will. Distro. So when you do set it up and you, you, you have to install my sequel and I don't know, maybe you'll have to install Mongo later and. I will, but all that's available. I don't know what other things you might have to install, but do you do you feel like you might come into uh, contact with oddities that just might arise because Linux is crazy? We have class remote occasionally. Like we had a snowstorm uh, yes. two weeks ago, and our class was remote, and we use something called Zoom. Yes, Zoom gets really flaky sometimes. Also, me having five monitors might have something to cause panic with it. Why don't you just call in on the laptop? Halfway through the class period, I did. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. And for some reason, the webcam worked automatically, so I have tape over the webcam now. Can't let anyone see my fortress. Right. When you talk to your coworkers in meetings and stuff when you're remote, do you let them see your face? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, that's weird. Do you let people see your home? Providing the human connection is very important to gaining client oh, trust. I'm a machine. Which is why they don't trust you yet. Well, I don't even trust myself, so it works out pretty well. Okay, then. Well, you should get a certificate. <laughs> So when, like, you know, you're you're doing all this, uh, you know, SQL stuff, Express stuff, um, in a few weeks, you, you were mentioning that you have your actual group project. Yep, group project number two. And so that, that group project is going to involve using an API of some sort, an API that you make specifically that has a database backing it. Yeah. Uh, and so, it's really open-ended. Yeah, so what ideas do you have today going into that? <sighs> like, you have two weeks, but what are you, what are you thinking so far? One of the things I wanted to do, I don't know how to do it yet, is like an autoresponder thing. One of the, like, hey, you guys, if you want a group project idea, I'm going to give you one. Make something that auto responds to tweets or something. And Okay, that, that's totally be kinda doable. cool, because there is a Twitter API. There we, is a we've Twitter used API. it. We've I used have it for used searching it. it. And as long as you don't make a million calls, you can get a Twitter key really yeah. easily. Yeah. It's what just would, if you get big, it's impossible. What would you use the database for in that situation? I don't know. Maybe like just storing past tweets. I don't know. It's just it's just an idea. Yeah. Um, so it, it's interesting because some API usages make sense. Like you, you give it data and then you get some new data handcrafted back. Or it's more of like a CRUD app. Are you familiar with CRUD? Uh, create, read, delete. Or what is it? Update, delete. C- create, read, update, delete. Yep. Yeah. So, or it's more like a CRUD app where instead of just being an API that you just give it data and it just returns data back like through computation, it actually stores data for a long period of time in the database layer. 
So it, it's hard to find something that is interesting outside of those two because every application is that way. And I'm hoping so much that we have small groups. Having the oh, weird uh, merger of two group. groups because we were a group of five, then we were a group of four, then we were a group of seven. Yeah, it's too many. And I made fun of my group members like, oh, he didn't even open the thing. He didn't even do. But what was he supposed to do? Right. Like it just after after. We submitted it and stuff. Then I really got to stop and reflect about how they were thrown under the bus. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping we have small groups of like four or five people, preferably four. So they were thrown under the bus in the sense that... They didn't pick the project. They didn't want to be there. Like, they were thrown under the bus in the sense that they didn't say, no, we'll just be a team on our own then. Yeah. They could have chosen that. I don't know if they knew that they could have chosen that. The We were assigned our groups. You're never assigned anything. You can always do what you want. Can't get a zero? No. Yeah. I got an A in the last group project. I have no idea what the people who never opened it got. Yeah. Um, You'll never know, but that's how it goes. I don't care. I take care of myself. I'm here to make myself better, and that's... I know it's kind of selfish, but I don't care so much about the group members. Yeah, and you... you there you, are stepping stones to my success. And you can't always care. I mean, you can care about the general success of the team, but you can only do so much. Are you feeling good about SQL and, and <gasps> Express and some of these more disparate topics? I'm going to be honest. Not, I understand it. I'm looking back at, uh, as I'm working forward, I'm spending just as much time looking back. Yeah. Because um, there's a lot. It's, it's extremely a lot. With practice, it's got to get better. It does get better, but you really have to, you can't do the same things you've done over and over again. And so a lot. When I when I look at tutorials online or you know especially video guides, you will get the same CRUD app over and over again, the same to do app, the same task app. The I've same, seen so many to do apps. Right, see, everyone makes a to do app. It, they do, and so you have to do something that you haven't done before, or at least something in a different domain that you haven't done before. So if you did to do apps one day, you should do pig apps the next day. Just one side question before we end: In the real world, have you ever used handlebars? No. Have you used any templating service? So that kind of fell out of fashion pretty close to immediately. With React or so so the, the, the thing is most APIs exist so that you can decouple the client rendering from the API layer, so the data layer. So like why have the server render all that stuff and then return it? On the other hand, there's a great use case for that, and that is Clueless, fill me oh. in. Uh have you ever heard of this thing called Google? Yes, I have. So Google wasn't always able to read React code. Oh. So, for example, if you made a website... Search engine crawler. Exactly. So if you made a website in React, what could Google do about it? Well, it could say, eh, a bunch of JavaScript. I don't know. It says something about... It would read the head tags, like if there were meta tags or the title. It would read some, through some of that. Otherwise, it could just give up. Now, today, allegedly, Google can read some JavaScript, but the preference is to do some server-side generation, sort of a hybrid. So maybe you'll serve, like, the static, like, the front welcoming page of your website service. It'll, you know, be like, welcome to something app. Uh, we are this, and the price is this, and so and so. And then all of that's static, generated from the server. But when you log in, and then you start doing the interactive parts, that's all React. So it's sort of the best of both then. Yeah. So no, I haven't really done handlebar stuff. We did do an app a couple of years ago with the Spring framework, so Java, and we actually did server-side generation for that because uh, React was still um, before 15, so it was st still unstable, basically. Okay. Yeah. Long time ago. Just I listen to you outside of the podcast and everything else, and I've never heard it come up. Yeah, I, I don't do it. But pretty much everything else in the class, well, besides like you know jQuery and stuff, yes. um, you yeah you if you talk about it, because you normally talk about work because you're very passionate about it. So I would also mention that on the Laravel side, there we actually do use something called Blade, oh. and so Blade is the equivalent of Handlebars and it lets you do server side templates. So our our Laravel CMS is a hybrid of an API layer that serves JSON for you know episodes and series and so on. But also the front end views are uh, compiled with Blade and then delivered down to the client. So we do both. Okay. But in Node, like we just stick to just API generation. I see. Yep. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, we 
that's pretty much everything we have for this week. But where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, RyanRapperset.com. You can find me at the nexus.tv slash people's page. What about your website? I'm not promoting that right now. Why not? It's static and old. Oh, so you need Still to make it. working on that. So you need See, to I'm trying tip. to find, I'm thinking of all, all these projects I could make, and I could make a project about updating it, but, you know, the portfolio update never got pushed up. Like, I made a beautiful thing that highlights some of my works. I was very proud of it. I loved the uh, CSS side scroller thing I had and the snap down. Never pushed it up. Why not? I don't know. Uh huh. Laziness? You should get on that. Yes. You got you you have all day tomorrow. I have all day. It It's so nice to have three days off in a row. It is. It it doesn't happen very often and it's just I couldn't have gotten better weather for it either. This is very very good weather to stay inside and program, I agree. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes. Well, you have a good one? Yep. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.